Hi, I'm your host, Christian Cristiano. Welcome to Wellness for Realists, where we help you live a healthier, more satisfying life. At this point, everyone has heard the term superfood. And while there is no official definition of a superfood, it is basically a nutrient-rich food considered to be especially beneficial for your health and well-being. It is quite possible that superfoods may even help to reduce medical conditions like diabetes and high cholesterol. They do this by offering nutritional value and filling a much needed gap in the dietary puzzle. They supply specific nutrients in high amounts. There's a wide array of superfoods with more foods occasionally being added to the list. Foods like dark chocolate, green tea, and quinoa are among the more popular superfoods. And then we have some less exotic ones like lentils and spinach. And of course, we have to mention the Brazilian-based acai, which took the US by storm a few years back. What superfoods have in common is that they are powerful sources of antioxidants, enzymes, amino acids, and other nutrients. Superfoods come from all over the world, including Central and South America, Europe, and even right here in the USA. Some superfoods have a history of up to 5,000 years and are linked to the Mayans as well as other indigenous tribes in the world. But it was not until fairly recently that they have become popular and available to the general public in the United States. Americans are finally realizing the enormous benefit from combining superfoods with an already nutritious diet and exercise plan. Now it's time to take a deeper look at superfoods. Simply put, a superfood is a food that delivers high concentrations of critical nutrients like beta carotene, A, C, E, and selenium. Besides being rich in these important nutrients, superfoods often hold these vitamins in the perfect balance. They have actually proven that the superfood dark chocolate helps with diabetes because it contains flavonoids, which helps to reduce insulin resistance and in turn aid in weight loss. There are other studies about blueberries and goji berries, all proving that these foods are healthy for us and affect our bodies in various positive ways, including lowering blood pressure and helping with depression. Many superfoods have a long history. Chia seeds, for example, have been linked back to 3,500 BC to the Mayans and Aztecs, whereas quinoa has a 5,000 year history, going all the way back to Peru, Bolivia, and Colombia, where it was a staple of the Incan diet. For the more dynamic palate, sardines are actually a powerful superfood, loaded with more omega-3s than even salmon. They are also known to be low in contaminants, and there is not worry about overfishing when it comes to sardines. Ever since we were kids, we have been told that spinach is really good for us. But why? Yes, there is the vitamin C and the beta carotene, but there are also two lesser known compounds called lutein and zeaxanthin, which work almost like a sunscreen for your eyes while guarding against macular degeneration. Do you have any guilty pleasure of liking pistachios? Well, you'll be happy to hear that these are packed with compounds that have been proven to lower LDL, the less desirable cholesterol. Of course, one of the most common superfoods is blueberries, getting their rich blue color from their flavonoids, which help to protect the brain and keep the memory strong. There are many other delicious superfoods to choose from, depending on what your health condition is and whether or not you have any diseases that you are battling with. The best thing you can do is to do some research online for superfoods relating to any condition you may have. In the studio with us today, we have Kip Stroden and his two lovely dogs, Ruby and Gizmo. This is what happens when you can't find a babysitter. Kip is a visionary in the natural product industry and the CEO of Essential Living Foods. Kip has taken the superfoods movement to a whole new level. He travels the world to deal personally with the farmers he is importing superfoods from. Kip, thanks for coming in today. Hey, thanks for having Great me. To Appreciate see you. it. Thanks yeah. for bringing your children. You're welcome. We love welcome. them. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> In one of the videos I watched of you, you mentioned that you were an agent for plants. Mm -hmm. I love that sentence, and I, I want to hear a little more about that. And after you tell us about that, since there's no official definition of superfood, uh, superfoods, give us your definition of superfoods. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, being an agent for plants is, uh, you know, plants have miraculous properties. Oddly enough, many of them benefit human beings. So uh, we represent plants from around the world. We look for them, we seek them out, and we promote them. And uh, just, you know, I think it's a miracle that plants have all these healing properties, whether, you know, in Chinese medicine or Ayurveda, just 
uh, Amazonian sh shamanic traditions. It's just amazing that these plants have these healing properties. So we feel like we're representing the plants and uh, they do a lot of amazing things for us. Very cool, very cool. So what got you involved in superfoods? What, what was it that drew you in? You know, my mom got me into nutrition in the late 70s, and I've just uh, always been fascinated with it and have always read books about nutrition and been an enthusiast. And uh, I think I just started learning about superfoods uh, initially through David Wolf, who mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, an author and a lecturer and an incredibly smart guy. And, um, you know, he inspired me initially and just turned me on to, you know, these particular foods, things like goji berries and acai and raw chocolate and yeah. things so, like that. So what, how would you define... Uh, a superfood. Hey guys, uh, so superfoods are nutrient dense foods. Things okay. that have, uh, whether it's uh, concentrated vitamins, minerals, protein, um, you know, something, you know, something that benefits us. But I, I think it's really about nutrient density that makes something a superfood. Okay, excellent, excellent. So out of all the superfoods that you import, which one do you import the most? What's kind of your, your biggest seller, if you have one? Yeah, we do. I mean, the biggest sellers are maca, which comes from high, high in the Andes in uh, an area of Peru called Junin, which is up in the Andes. And, and what's incredible about maca is it grows at about 12,000 feet in altitude. Wow. And um, so it's, it's a really hardy plant. Almost nothing grows at that altitude. And so. what are some of the benefits of maca? Uh, maca is an aphrodisiac. It's uh -huh. an adaptogen, kind of like ginseng, uh -huh. and just a, a powerful, powerful plant. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Um, and um, okay, so we know that there are so many superfoods out there. Um, how do people know, if people come to you and say, which, which superfood is the most important superfood for me? Right. What do you tell them? I mean, how, how, do you, how do people know which ones they need and which ones they don't? I think it would have to do with what that personal, you know, that person's personal needs were at that time. Okay. You know, Camu Camu has a lot of vitamin C. Um, you know, maca is an adaptogen like ginseng and is really powerful uh, for libido. It's an aphrodisiac for men and women. So I think it just depends on what someone's needs are at the time. Okay. All right. Great. Yeah. So we have some questions from our audience. Okay. Uh, from Facebook. This comes from Sarah Berta in Coronado. She says, what is one superfood that I should incorporate into my diet right away? Hmm, great question. Um, I, would say, I would say the antioxidant superfoods. So uh, things like acai, goji berries. I know I'm giving you more than one. That's but, okay. Um, acai, goji berries, uh, camu camu. Okay. Um, things like uh, uh, blueberries. What is camu camu? Camu I mean, camu is never heard camu, of camu, camu camu is a fruit uh, that grows in the Amazon, mm -hmm. and it's got the highest concentration of vitamin C of any fruit on Earth. Wow, cool! And it's an incredible antioxidant. Very cool. So I would say I would stick in the antioxidant realms. Um, pomegranate's amazing. Uh, okay. Goji berries, acai, camu camu. Those are a, a short list. Yeah, great, yeah. excellent. Okay, so next question from Matt Richardson, right here in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. He said, "Can superfoods restore your digestive tract?" And if so, do they make probiotics unnecessary? Well, I think probiotics that you buy in a health food store have been manufactured, and I think some of those products are excellent. Um, you know, the superfoods, quote unquote, that are probiotic rich are things like kombucha, uh, kefirs, coconut kefirs, and, um, you know, another one is called natto, which okay. is, you know, a, a part of the Japanese traditions, and it's a fermented soy. Uh, okay. product. Uh, so yeah, so those are really great for digestion and you know, those would be superfoods I'd recommend for digestion. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. And then we have one more, Brett Ellington from Long Beach. He asks, what is the best superfood for pain? And then he asks, superheroes wear capes. Why don't superfoods? <laughs> it's really cool. Well, I, I thought of a, a superfood cartoon where, you know, the the, the plants and the fruits and uh, vegetables would become like uh, cartoon characters uh -huh. wearing capes. Wow. So really you're cool. one step ahead of Brett. Yeah. Um, go, Brett. <laughs> but as far as a pain reducing, I would say I would, I would use mangosteen. Okay. Uh, and in particular because mangosteen is one of the most powerful an uh, anti-inflammatories, which okay. I think would reduce pain. But uh, that's, that's the only one that comes to mind for pain. Okay. And what I'd like to know more about your business, I yeah. know that you actually travel to 
these parts of the world. Where do you go for your business where you go and import products from? I know you go to Peru. Yeah. Where else do you go? How do you deal with the kind of indigenous people there? Yeah. What does that look like? Well, Peru is an amazing country because it's so biodiverse. I mean, you have dry deserts, you have Amazon, you have high Andes mountains. So it's kind of a, it's a treasure chest of biodiversity. Okay. And also the big agricultural companies didn't uh, get into Peru just because of the political system. So you have a lot of heirloom varieties of plants that go all the way back to the Incas. So there are these ancient Incan crops like golden berries, like purple corn, like maca, like lucuma, that are really special and just haven't been uh, adulterated by uh, genetic uh, modification or even hybridization. Okay. And so when you first go there, you know, you're like this big white guy from America. Yeah. How, what is that like, dealing with them? Did they welcome you right away? Or? Well, I think, you know, I, um, I traveled to Peru uh, initially based on uh, relationships that had been created by the founder of the company. Okay. So they were old relationships, and that's how I got started. Got it. Okay. And um, so I think Peruvians and Ecuadorians are really warm people, and... Uh, but you know, I had some initial contacts there when I first went, and gotcha. those have just you know uh, moved into you know more relationships that have expanded over the years. Okay, great. So Peru, Ecuador, are there any other countries? Yeah. That you, where else do you import from? Um, in, a lot from Indonesia. Okay. So we have a partner uh, there, um, amazing company called Big Tree Farms, and they do incredible work with agriculture, and uh, they've built organic cooperatives uh, throughout Indonesia and Bali and Jakarta and uh, Sulawesi, and they, and they do cacao, and they do coconut sugar, and uh, they used to do cashews, but um, amazing, uh, amazing partner that we have in Very Indonesia. Cool. Yeah. So for the audience out there who they want to know where to order superfoods from, are they huh? all created equal? How do you tell which ones are better as far as quality? Well, I, I mean, I think uh, taste, color, texture, okay. you know, use your instincts. I mean, we consider ourselves the premium brand in the category, and we always look, uh, search the world for the highest quality products, ones that we want to consume ourselves. And that's Essential Living Foods. Yeah, so our, you know, our company is called Essential Living Foods, and you can buy our products at EssentialLivingFoods.com. We have a lot of products. Um, and there are other great companies in the space, so it's not just us. But I, th I would say that you know we really, really care about social impact, how we treat the farmers. Yes. Um, our packaging is all ecological and recyclable, and it's really important to us. And there are some companies that you know those values aren't really core to what they do. They're just looking sure. for the cheapest stuff. Exactly. So I think really, but use your God-given instincts. You know, f taste, smell. And then what we do as a company is we do a lot of uh, lab testing and we send things off to labs and we learn a lot about, you know, is something clean? Is it, um, is it nutritionally potent? Does it have all the vitamins and minerals that we'd seen from other lots of, of that same product? So I think science is really important to integrate as well. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So besides your website, EssentialLivingFoods.com, yeah. um, how else can they find you? Let the audience know if there's any um, You know, we'd love for you to go into Whole Foods Market around the country and uh, other independent health food stores. Uh, you know, we're mostly in health food stores. Um, so. Uh, you know, organic uh, food stores and health food stores around the country. And you have a storefront of your own? We don't. Okay. We don't. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks for coming in. Thanks for bringing the kids. You're welcome. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was great hosting you. Thanks for your Thanks. Thanks knowledge. so much. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Now that you have a better idea of what superfoods are and how to incorporate them into your diet, I want to challenge you to add one superfood of your choice to your daily routine. It may be as easy as adding blueberries to your oatmeal or chia seeds to your daily smoothie. And for those of you that want to take it to the next level, you could switch out your current grains of choice for quinoa or switch your morning cereal to steel cut oats. Regardless of your choices, know that small incremental changes are the best way to improve your diet and exercise regimen. Crash diets and drastic changes don't usually last. And what I like to remind you of is that nobody knows your body like you do, so listen to it. Pay attention to your energy levels throughout the day and on those days that you feel great, make mental notes about what it was that you ate so that you can incorporate more of that into your diet. Every body is different, and just because something has the superfood label on it does not mean it's good for everyone. For example, if you're allergic to nuts, don't eat the superfood pistachio. It's not a good idea. Experiment with other foods. 
and I invite you to read as much as you can about the foods you eat and the foods that interest you. No matter how many healers you have around you or how much knowledge you have, your body is the final judge and jury about what is good for it. So please, listen closely to what it is telling you. Remember, I'm here for you, so be sure to reach out on Facebook and Twitter or email me directly and let me know how you're doing and how I can support you. All too often, people walk in the door and turn on the TV like it's a lamp. Now that you know the healing power of music is rooted in history and science, we challenge you to turn off the TV and turn on some music. If there are unhealthy time drains that you're participating in, maybe you can replace that time with music instead. I suggest you go to your digital music source and make different playlists and title them accordingly. For example, one can be called inspiration, relaxation, etc. In the morning upon waking, add the inspiration playlist to your morning practice, whatever it might be. When you're at the gym, if you use music, be sure to make a playlist that is uplifting and energizing. Finally, be sure to use music to heal your emotional state. Studies show that you are better off listening to sad music if you are feeling sad. This may be because it helps you go deeper into the feelings that need to be processed so you could come out on the other side of them. We wish you happiness and health, and please be sure to keep in touch with us on Twitter and Facebook and let us know if you have any questions about your health and wellness plan. For more Wellness for Realists, be sure to subscribe to us at EmpowerMe.tv. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and you can find me at AcupuncturebyChristian.com. Thank you.